Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to show you how to update the BIOS in your computer. And if you've ever done it before, you know it can get a little bit tricky. So we're going to show you the basic steps that will probably be applicable for most different BIOSes out there, things you need to be aware of. Now recently I did a video explaining one reason why you might need to update your BIOS. And that is for the very strange new thing in this universe, which is an operating system requiring, for example, a new CPU and or a new motherboard. And um, I explained how that can be possible. And we showed what steps you need to go through if your computer requires a new motherboard or a new CPU, how you can go about doing it. And one of the steps was you might need to update your BIOS. So we're going to show you how to do that in this video. So you can see here we've got an example of a BIOS screen, but um, these steps should help you with the general concepts in doing just about any um, BIOS update. So the number one question is, why would you need to update your BIOS? Now, personally, I've been doing computers since the 1970s. Rarely do I ever do BIOS updates. Historically, it's been a bit of a risk that you can cause problems. Um, but now um, it's getting to the point, like we say with Windows 11, you may have to update your BIOS. Why would you need to update the BIOS? Unrelated to Windows 11, you might have security patches. Nowadays, there's a lot of security stuff you need to be aware of, and BIOSes are not exempt from requiring security patches. So you may need to do a security patch. And as we said before, you may need to install a new CPU and or a new motherboard, for example, if you want Windows 11 um, compatibility. So there's a couple reasons why you might want to, but there's a whole bunch of reasons why you might not want. To. Why wouldn't you want to update the BIOS? Well, in my experience, my recent experience, I just did an update. Um, there's a bunch of things that can go wrong. And with me, a bunch of things did go wrong. After updating, for example, there may be issues with Microsoft products like Windows and or Office showing that they are no longer activated. That happened to me recently, uh, updating a BIOS on my MSI motherboard. It was Office showing not activated, but there's a lot of people online with MSI, Gigabyte, and other motherboards saying that when they do a BIOS update, Windows also might say that it's not activated. And apparently that's been going on for a year or so and nothing's been done. So it's, it's kind of sketchy whether it's a user problem or it's a Windows problem. But just be aware you may get stuff not being activated. Also, if you are, for example, running virtual machines, this is another problem I had with my recent update of BIOS. I've got an AMD motherboard, AMD virtualization, AMD V, may get disabled and you can't run virtual machines. And again, that happened to me. So what you need to do is go through and enable secure virtual machine, SVM in the BIOS. It can be kind of difficult to find it. So just be aware you may encounter strange things like that that might take hours to figure out how to exactly fix it. And the worst thing that people worry about, and I've been worrying about for many years, is it may fail if you lose power or something happens and it might what's called brick your motherboard. You, May as well just toss your motherboard out because it's not going to work anymore. There's probably other reasons. These are things that I've encountered, and um, I'm sure there are other things that you might encounter. When I ran OBS Studio, which is the software I use to record these videos, suddenly my capture device, which is showing my main monitor, wasn't recognized anymore, so I had to remove it and, and redo it. So there's a lot of strange things that can happen when you do your BIOS, so just be aware uh, if you're a hobbyist or an enthusiast who's really bored and wants something to do, doing your BIOS is probably not something that you want to mess with. So now the first thing you want to do is find out what BIOS version you have to find out what the new versions are. And to do that, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go into the search bar and you can type system information. And under the system summary, you can scroll down here and you can see BIOS mode UEFI and BIOS version date, and it's an AMI, and it's 1.P3, and this is dated 7-2022. So you can find out in system information. Otherwise, you can reboot and hit delete or whatever and get into the BIOS, as we showed before, and that'll give you the latest version. So once you know what your version is, you can then go to the motherboard website 
And here's uh, an example from my board uh, at MSI. They've got drivers downloads, manuals, FA FAQ, warranty, compatibility. But under drivers and downloads, you can hit BIOS and you can scroll down and see all of the different versions of BIOS. Now, this board I got is from about 2016, 2017. And I had, until recently, version 1.0 from 2017. And if you scroll up, you can see all the new versions that have come out in the meantime. And the first thing you need to do is you need to scroll through these and look at these descriptions and notes to find out what they did. Here, improves system stability, memory compatibility, system stability, more system stability, updated AGESA, memory compatibility, memory compatibility, uh, PCI hot plug function, memory compatibility, and here we've got improved Intel 600p compatible, Board Explorer, post time, and above 4G decoding, memory compatibility. Here there is a note in the uh, 2018 release, it must install, which probably means you must install NVIDIA graphics driver uh, or latest version when using the AMD Raven Ridge CPU and NVIDIA graphic card. So you might get graphics issues if you don't have the latest version so you got to make sure you look at these and find out if you need to update the graphics driver uh, more usb mouse compatibility m.2 compatibility memory compatibility and here there is another compatibility with amd athlon processor with radio and vega graphics and there's a note msi strongly recommends to update amd chipset driver or latest version before update so that's really important. If you're going to do the BIOS, you need to first do this AMD chipset driver, download and install it, and then do the BIOS upgrade. So it's really important you read these notes. There's more compatibility, compatibility, remove support of AMD Bristol Ridge, and so on. Oh, here is a TPM, Trusted Platform Module, Out of Bounds Access Security Patch. There's a security patch. So here you can see there's a lot of versions and uh, they recommend that we get the latest drivers and also the uh, install the latest chipset drivers for AMD. So to do the chipset driver, you go to driver and there's only one latest version and you just download and run it. It's pretty straightforward. It's an executable, I believe. So once you've got that, then you're going to have to download the latest BIOS. Now these are a couple of beta versions. Um, I downloaded this version, so you're going to have to download that, unzip it, and then put the resulting files on a flash drive. So now the first thing you're going to want to do after you download the file and unzip the file, um, here is, uh, in my case, the MSI website page that shows how to update the BIOS. And very important, the very first thing they say before you start the process and this is generally going to be the case. You need a formatted FAT32 USB flash drive, okay? It's got to be FAT32. And there's a note. USB flash drive capacity needs to be 32 gigabytes or below. In this case, mFlash only supports FAT32. And mFlash is the function that does the flashing from the file on the USB drive. So make sure you've got a FAT32 drive that um, is 32 gigabytes or below, all right? So I'm going to assume you know how to format a drive. Um, here is my USB thumb drive, and I can right-click on it and hit Properties. Under File System, it says FAT32, so that's all set. Keep in mind, if you reformat the drive and it's not FAT32 and you format it to FAT32, you're going to erase all the files, so be careful about that. So here is the formatted flash drive, USB flash drive. It's a 32 gigabyte drive. And I have unzipped and installed the folder on that thumb drive. And that's all there is on the thumb drive. And it's got a text file and a 1P3. This is the BIOS file. It's about 16 megabytes. So this is all you're going to need on the flash drive. So now that you've got the flash drive formatted FAT32 and you've got the BIOS file uh, copied onto the flash drive, what I would do is I would plug that flash drive into a motherboard USB port. If you've got a hub, 
Um, I'd avoid that. Just plug it into the motherboard USB port so you don't get any problems. And then what you do is you restart your computer. And in my case, you have to hit delete to get to this BIOS screen. And somewhere in the BIOS screen, you will see a button that allows you to flash the BIOS from the USB. With this MSI BIOS, that's the M flash. And you just click on that M flash with the USB flash drive installed and then it will give you this system will auto reboot and enter flash mode Do you want to continue hit yes and then it's going to ask you to find on that flash drive which is the file that you want to install so just select that and hit enter and it should start the process now when you start the process it's going to take a few minutes in my case maybe three to five minutes uh, it'll probably reboot um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just let it sit there and do it. And hopefully it will be successful and it will restart into Windows. So if everything was successful, um, you can go into Windows, check that the new version was successful using the Windows system information as we showed before. Or you can just reboot and get into the BIOS and it will give you the latest version that's been installed. Also, keep in mind, as we mentioned, don't forget, after updating, there may be issues with different software. Microsoft products like Windows and or Office might show not activated. Um, you're going to have to go online and see how to fix that. In my case, for Office, I just had to click a button and it would automatically activate again. Um, and then if you can't run, if you're running virtual machines, um, you may have a problem. In order to fix it, you may need to go into the BIOS and enable Secure Virtual Machine, SVM, or other things, depending on the, the motherboard and the BIOS, and make sure that's all enabled, or you may have to go search. So that's about it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.